So before we get started, let me say that this jQuery project course is not a beginner's course. You will need the basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, and jQuery. If you are not familiar with these technologies, I encourage you to do some independent research on these topics. You also need a text editor. I'm using Sublime Text, but you can use the text editor of your choice. In this course, you will often hear me refer to the prototype. This is the project I developed before I started screencasting or recording this video. The final project will look a little different due to improvements and changes. If you go to this website, you can view both the prototype and the final project, which I call working. This is the prototype. This is what I created to prepare for this course. Then, as I was working through this course, I made some changes. This is the final project except for the code block, which I repositioned to the left. You can also learn more about this project by clicking the back button and reading this article. Knowledge is the beginning of skill, so the more of it you have, the more skillful you will become. Now, let's go back and look at the code. In the HTML head section, notice that there is a link to a style sheet, a link to the jQuery library, and also a link to the script where we will be writing our functions. Down in the body, there is a table element with an ID of color picker. We will use a JavaScript for loop and an array of hexadecimal numbers to create this color picker. Before we look at the script, let's go to the CSS. Notice that I positioned the color picker with absolute positioning. Right now, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to give the table some dimensions and a border with a color with a hexadecimal number. This hexadecimal number I'm using is shorthand for red. I'll go over this in a minute, but first, let's take a look. So, there's our table with a red border right where we positioned it. Now, back to the code. This hashtag F00 is the shorthand hexadecimal for the color red. Here is the full hexadecimal number. Because the first two characters which represent red are the same, and the second two representing green are the same, and the third two representing blue are the same, we can simply use the shorthand and replace the FF with a simple F the zero zero for the second and third with a single zero. It all works out the same. I'm going to remove all this for now. Now let's talk about the inline style attribute. Because we will be using a for loop to loop through a large data set, in this case an array of hexadecimal numbers, we will benefit from using the style attribute. So for example, in the HTML, let's create one table row or TR tag and two table cells or TD tags and give each one an inline background color. So style equals inside quotation marks we type the property background which must be separated from the value color with a colon. So this cell is going to be red, so I'm going to copy this whole attribute and paste it down here. I'm going to make this one blue, 00F. Now let's go take a look. This is how we are going to create the color picker, but we will be using JavaScript to do that. We will do that later. Because JavaScript for loops and arrays are a little more advanced, we will benefit from a review of these topics. So, let's do some coding experiments to get a better understanding of these topics, along with modular division. But let's do that in the next video. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.